Character selection is an important part of any games. From choosing a simple character or making your own player or even just showing the ability of all the players, character selection plays a vital part of your game. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a simple character selection page for your game. I will follow the UI for Need for Speed because it's one of my favorite games and also I like all the color in this game. So let's get it started. I have already created a simple unit project. Uh, I'm using free asset from asset store called Low Poly Cars by Broken Vector. It's got a quite a good collection of cars uh, and environments. I already imported it into my project. Uh, now, my current scene, I have a simple directional light and a spotlight and the environment prefab from the asset. Now for our character selection scene, I need a place where I can show all the cars. To do that, I'm going to open the prefab. Then let's create an empty all game object called car spot. Now as a character selection scene, I like to make my camera to move around the cars so player can see the whole car picture. Something like Michael Bay's 360 signature shot. So to do that, I will create a C sharp script called look and rotate. Let's open the script. First, I will declare a variable named target. This will be the object that our camera will look at and then rotate. Now, instead of update, I will use fix update because that makes the camera move more smoothly. Now, I will just put transform.look at, then look at the target, and then transform.translate vector 3.write into time.data time. Let's run this. Great, but it's quite it's quite slow. Let's multiply by ten, maybe. Cool. Now you have a cool looking camera that moving around. Now for each character or the car in this case, I will have their own properties. So in this case, we can use a scriptable object which is the perfect for this kind of uh, use. Let's create a script called car model. And instead of mono behavior, it will inherit from the scriptable object. Uh, now, if we go back to our reference video that I showed you earlier, we can see each car here has several properties like top speed, difficulties, A, BP, BHP, so let's add those variables for our, our car. For performance, I will use an enum called tire 1, tire 2, and tire 3. And for handling, also use enum, and it can be easy, normal, expert, and so on. Now all we need to do is to tell Unity to create an asset menu and then we put the file name and the menu name. In this example, I'm gonna call just car. Now, if you come back to Unity and press create, you see we have a new option called car. That's so easy. Let's click it. And you will have all those property available that we, uh, that we declared just now to edit. Uh, now we also need another parameter called car which will have the reference of our car prefab. Now let's rename our scriptable object to truck, uh, then attach the truck prefab to it, and let's update all other properties. So I'm going to quickly add three more scriptable objects for the car, bus, and the police car. Now this scriptable object are not doing anything right now, um, because we need to, we need another script for, uh, to call this. Uh, let's create another script uh, called car selection. Create an empty game object and attach the script to this. In this script, we will have an array of scriptable object called car models. Uh, let's drag all the scriptable car models that we have so far. Now earlier we created an empty game object called car spot. 
So we need a reference to that of game object. Uh, so I'm gonna call it public transform spot and a list of game object called cars, which we will initialize by cars equal to new list game object. Now we will look through all the car models as uh, for each car models in car models. Then find the car prefer by car model dot car and instantiate them where the position will be the car spot dot position and the rotation will be quaternion dot identity. Now we don't want to show them when we open the game, uh, so let's put the set active false and add them to the car list by car dot add. Cool. I'm gonna move it to the top so we can see it easily. Let's add a car spot to the spot. If we run this, we see all four cars prefab at the scene, but we, it's not active, so we cannot see them. Now we can make it more organized by adding go game object dot transform dot set parent to spot, uh, which will put all the model under the car spot. Cool. Now we still cannot see the cars because we didn't activate them, uh, but we don't want to activate all at once. Uh, we want to activate one at a time. Uh, so to track which one we are activating, let's create an integer called parent car and create a function called show car from list. Here we will set active the current car to true. And now we will call this function after we finish instantiating all the cars. Now it's showing the bus, uh, great. And now let's create two buttons, one for next and one, another for previous, so we can navigate through each car. Now let's create two new functions. Uh, on click next and on click previous. So when user click next, we make the currently active car to false. And if current car is less than our total car, so we increase the current car by one. Otherwise, we set the current car to zero. So it is start from the beginning. Then we call show car from the list. And for Previous button, we make the currently active car to false. We check if current car is equal to zero, then we set it to total car, otherwise we decrease by one. Instead of this, you can also write current car equal to current car plus one, and here current car equal to current car minus one, which are the same things. And then we call show car from list. Now let's attach uh, the car selection script to each button and then choose on click next for the next button and on click brief to for the previous button. Let's run this. That's it. That's all you need to do to uh, select the character. Now we still need to show the information about each car. So to do that, I'm going to create a UI panel Adjust his position as you like. Now then create a text max pro and input the necessary asset. Let's call it a name. Similarly, let's create for model, the speed, the tire, and the scale. Now back to the car selection script. Since we're gonna use the text mesh pro, so we need to import uh, using TM Pro. In public text uh, mesh pro ugui is title let's attach our text mesh pro to this now we need to access the text mesh pro gui component to update the text i'm going to call this in the awake function and so let's create awake function and the title equal to title dot get component text uh, mesh pro gui now let's back to our uh, show car from list function and here we're going to call title.text equal to car models which is our scriptable object for car and then current car.name. Let's run. That's it. 
this is so easy now we can see all the cars name let's quickly update all the other text and update their values now for top speed our variable is float but we want to show the kilometer per hour as a string or like in the picture in this case we can just easily create a simple function inside our scriptable object and call it uh, get top spread and we will return the top spread and the km by our that's all that's the beauty of a scriptable object now all our car is updated with this uh, function if you don't want to make the function uh, you can also use the to string and that will also do the trick in this case great now let's run it now we have all the character selection scene ready to go we can see all the information here so that's all for this tutorial now so i hope you liked it please press the like button or subscribe for more i'll see you in the next one